Somebody said to me the other day who kind of knows one or two things about how Washington works is that if you're a journalist uh, on American TV or American cable news, there's kind of a game you have to play. Uh, you're not allowed to ask certain questions. If you ask certain questions, you will not be allowed to then interview that politician again. You will be blacklisted. And I thought, that can't be true. Uh, and then I saw, which I'm going to share with you, Marjorie Taylor Greene being asked by a British journalist about conspiracy theories. Uh, suffice to say, Marjorie Taylor Greene literally used words that you would expect in the gutter. Many people say that's where she resides. Uh, what is going on when they are allowed to say uh, the press are biased, it's not a free press, but you're not allowed to ask them any questions that there may be an answer they don't want to hear? Uh, she could have just said no comment. Is this the reaction of somebody who wants to be vice president? That. that was a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and wild accusations, uh, which we know have been uh, debunked by, by medical science. And we should be clear that vaccines work and save lives, and they have millions of lives in this country. Now, it's really unfortunate that we're actually here having this hearing trying to poke holes and uh, cause more vaccine hesitancy amongst the public. But we know that we're here because committee members on this committee have demanded that we have this hearing, and we continue to cave and give those members uh, everything that they want. Now, we also know that we have a member of this committee that just actually made some comments, who's been on social media, demanding that we hold this exact same hearing. Uh, this is the same person that we know that has, on countless posts, has spread misinformation, encouraged parents to refuse routine vaccinations for their children, which you just heard, by the way, and even con compared our pandemic efforts responses to the Holocaust. I want to just actually read something which is in the public record. I'm not um, uh, saying anything that's not in the public record. Uh, that a member of this committee actually said, the same person that is actually attacking vaccines, said that vaccinated employees get a, vaccine logo, a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. I want to, I want to read that uh, again. Vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Uh, th that is the level of uh, insanity and attacks that we are having here as we actually debate the, li the lives saved around vaccinations. I'm not a doctor, but I have a PhD in recognizing bullshit when I hear it. I'd like to point out to everyone that we knew early on, as a matter of fact, everyone knew early on, that the people that were at risk of hospitalization and dying of COVID were those that were obese, had diabetes, were over the age of 65. We also knew that children were at no risk, practically zero risk of being hospitalized or deaths from COVID-19. We knew that young people, healthy young people were not at risk. However, Dr. Marks, you rushed through this process of, of authorizing these vaccines, even though you knew the side effects, you knew about myocarditis and you knew about the studies. So let's be very real about the situation that we have. Here we have, let's talk about the reports on VAERS. Some people in here are trying to be, belittle these reports, but these reports come from people, people that died, people that got injured. And in December, in the middle of December, I think it was the 10th or the 11th, the first vaccine was approved. It was authorized under emergency use. Boom, 10,596 reports in less than a month. 2021, 706,767 reports on VAERS for vaccine injuries and deaths. 2022, it, it was 206,676. 2023, and it went going down because the mandates. Do you want to see Hunter Biden testify? Either I, in listen. front of the cameras, behind closed doors. To be perfect. He, wouldn't, he, wouldn't he make life easier on himself to just To be do perfectly all. honest, I don't really care. I'm going to be honest. Because this is supposed to be about impeaching the president. But when you have idiots, and I, I am intentionally calling her an idiot, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who wants to flash nude pictures, I don't... I, I wouldn't take these people seriously, right? Like, 
So are you wanting me behind closed doors because you want to dig into my personal sexual life? Does that have anything to do with the president of the United States and him being impeached? If we had serious people, then I probably would care because I would say this is a serious body of people that are looking for something because they have something. But they have been investigating Hunter for years. It started under the Trump administration. If you had something, I promise you, they wouldn't have held back. And so it's a bunch of games. You know, what his lawyers think is best for him, then so be it. But to say that he's spitting in the face of Congress is just false. He has tried to present himself. He has tried to present himself under the parameters that were laid out by our chairman. And, you know, again, they just change their minds. They do what they want to do. They're yeah. just kind of blowing by the wind. So All right. who knows? See, every time we seemingly have a hearing on voting rights, we're talking about the fact that people are cheating. So let's talk about who's cheating. I got a few articles. Uh, are you familiar with the fact that there was recently a settlement with this uh, little news company called Fox News? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, that was for about 780 something million dollars. Was it because they were lying about the, the elections? Yes, it was for a... Um, okay, there we go. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, there also was this article, because I don't want us to base anything on Georgia at all. Please, Jesus, not Georgia. Okay, because Georgia purged 87,000... Will the gentlewoman yield? Not, I think I Georgia not, matters. I will not yield. I am reclaiming my time. All right, so there were 87,000 people that were purged that were legitimate voters. So, no, we don't want to copy off of Georgia. Um, also, another GOP voter admits he committed fraud... Another one in Pennsylvania, man who admits he voted for Trump with his dead mom's name because he listened to too much propaganda. The general ladies. Members that only really wanted to get to the January Sixers. That's all they really cared about. They didn't care about the people that are consistently being incarcerated here and the treatment that they get. These people are in single cells. Have y'all ever watched any movie, right? When people go to jail, what happens? They're in what we call general population, right? Like there's a group of people. They have their own cells. They have access to laptops and tablets. I mean, it's it's unlike anything that I've ever seen. And like I said, coming out of Texas, I have seen so much worse. They even have, you know, it's two kind of separate facilities. The facility the January Sixers are in, that is the newest facility that they have. That facility was built in the 90s. Thank you, Mr. Grothman. The chair now recognizes Ms. Crockett from Texas. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So most everyone up here on the other side of the aisle has endorsed a person um, that has been found liable for sexual abuse of women um, to be our president of the United States. But we are going to talk about how this party is going to protect women. Protecting women, what exactly does that mean? Are we going to talk about sexual abuse? Because we can get into it, because we do have some real conversations that we can have about it. Considering the fact that we're currently in the middle of, say, a war, there's been allegations of rape being used in war, seems like maybe we could have a few conversations about what it would look like to prevent that, what it would look like to maybe go and get those hostages out, maybe go and send some money to our allies. It looks like we could do something of value, but let me tell you, this session, we have set so many good records. One of those records was we've had a record number of people that have retired or announced their retirements in the month of November from the House. And from everything that I hear, it's because this body has become completely unserious. But we do have serious issues, especially when it comes to women. So let's talk about what it looks like to protect women in this country. When lawmakers like this are so far out of touch with what women need, we see states pushing back, at least states that will allow you to push back. I'm from the state of Texas, and of course, they don't want you to ever have an opportunity to raise your voice in the state of Texas. In fact, Ms. Perry, I know your organization, the Heritage Foundation, loves Texas. Ooh, they love Texas. They always sending us some nonsense bills um, that somehow set this country on the wrong trajectory. They send them to Texas. They send them to Florida. Every deplorable state that we can think about, they usually come in out of y'all's think tank. But nevertheless... When we talk about protecting women, what we've seen is, say, in the state of Ohio was one of the most recent states when their lawmakers didn't have the courage to do what they needed to do because, of course, we believe in order. And 
because we believe in point of order. gerrymandering in this point of order. I, I moved Please to strike her words. I moved to strike her words. Deplorable states. That's not a point of order. Let the gentlelady proceed. I the committee money. will suspend. Whoa, 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 whoa. The committee will suspend. Just hold. Slow. Maybe states have personhood. So I'm prepared to rule. Um, this is not a statement. A deplorable state is not a statement again against a person. Um, or it is not engaging in personalities. So I'll continue and you can reclaim your time. Thank you, Madam Chair. So we saw recently what the state of Ohio did when their lawmakers refused to listen to them. We also have seen what the state of Kansas decided to do. When it comes to protecting women, it seems like the only people that are standing up for women on an everyday basis are the people themselves because they're elected officials that somehow get into these positions in a gerrymandered way. They don't seem to represent the interest of the people. But let me talk to you about something that is very real in this country, and that is unhoused people. And I'm sure that while we don't have an expert on the matter here, many of you may not recognize that the majority of the youth that are actually unhoused in this country are members of the LGBTQIA community. When we look at mental health issues in this country, if we care, because I didn't hear terms that I never thought I heard hear certain people say up in here. Uh, we didn't heard about equality. We didn't heard about regressiveness. We've heard about civil rights. I, I can't get the Voting Rights Act passed. Uh, we've heard we need to follow the science. Are you kidding me? When we're sitting up here talking about anti-vaccine and all this nonsense. But let me tell you about somebody that I love very dearly who has struggled and suffered because of the ignorance that continues to be perpetuated, which is not what is in the will of the people. Young Libby who has been my constituent for far too long and gone through too much in the state of Texas. At the age of seven, Libby started testifying down at the state house about the bathroom bill. I think that was a Heritage Foundation situation as well. Started testifying at the age of seven about how it made her feel. Then ultimately, Libby has been testifying and at this point, Libby is 13 years old. And I'm gonna tell you something. I know that it was characterized as, oh, this is the cool thing to do, and maybe uh, people are encouraged to be trans, and so they don't want to speak out. And now that it is not the easy thing to do when you have to sit here and prove your personhood every single time that you're walking around. You got people that feel away because they losing in the sport. And listen, the, the, the trans person, it don't sound like even came in first from what I could tell. But nevertheless... I think we need to focus on real things that are real issues as it relates to women. If you care about women, let's get the ERA passed so we can have equal rights. Let's make sure that we fully fund access to reproductive health. Let's make sure that we are protecting those that are being raped because they're being raped in this country as well as abroad. And this party has decided that even if you're raped and you're a child, guess what? You shouldn't have access to reproductive health care. That is not protecting women, and I will yield. Thank you. Before this gets even more out of control, <laughs> I'm going to try and reel it back in. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this is a brand new year. But unfortunately, my Republican colleagues are still running the same tired old playbook. There are real problems facing our nation. The right to bodily autonomy is under attack across the country. From extreme life-threatening abortion restrictions to bans on health care for trans youth. We're not even two weeks into the new year, and we've already seen the first horrific school shooting of 2024. <coughs> we are a little more than a week away from large parts of our government shutting down. 
and their immigration system is simply not working because Congress has failed to reform it for over 30 years. And what are House Republicans doing to respond to these problems? Mostly fighting among themselves. Their inability to govern led them to pass just 27 bills that were signed into law last year, marking the least productive session of Congress since the Great Depression. And this year is shaping up to be no better. Their historic dysfunction has prompted multiple Republican members of this subcommittee to complain that they have nothing to campaign on. But instead of laying out a legislative agenda to address the needs of the American people, this committee spent its time yesterday focused on a subpoena of the president's son, chasing conspiracy theories in an impeachment inquiry that has not turned up a shred of evidence of wrongdoing by the president. At the same time, the House Committee on Homeland Security held its first official hearing on the impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas, another inquiry completely devoid of fact, with articles of impeachment reportedly imminent in that committee. I do not know whether the chairman of this committee deliberately waived our jurisdiction on impeachment to another committee, or if Republican leadership simply took it away from him in an effort to appease the most extreme members of the MAGA conference. But the decision sets a terrible precedent. Either way, the decision is a sad commentary on the priorities of the Republican majority. They seem not to care what they break or how they diminish the House Judiciary Committee while they ignore the real challenges facing the American people. They continue to focus solely on fruitless investigations because they have no plan for meaningful reform to the immigration system or any idea how to address any of the other problems facing our nation. Instead of working with Democrats towards reasonable, workable, bipartisan changes to the immigration system, Republicans will return to their tired playbook and use this subcommittee to demonize immigrants. We will hear in an argument largely devoid of facts and wrong on the law that immigrants are a drain on public benefits rather than the lifeblood of this country. As President Reagan said, quote, thanks to each wave of new arrivals to this land of opportunity, we're a nation forever young, forever bursting with energy and new ideas, and always on the cutting edge, always leading the world to the next frontier, close quote. By and large, undocumented immigrants are not eligible for, for federal benefits. In fact, undocumented em immigrants pay into benefits they will never be eligible to receive themselves. Because of this, immigrants, both documented and undocumented, pay billions more into public benefits programs than they will ever get back. They are subsidizing the public. While federal benefits are not available to undocumented immigrants, some states, like my home state of New York and the chairman's home state of California, choose to offer the same state benefits to everyone in their state, regardless of immigration uh, status. That is their choice, and Congress has no say in how states choose to utilize their tax dollars. To the extent that localities like New York City face challenges in caring for immigrants arriving from the southern border, many of these challenges stem in large part from the desire of Texas Governor Abbott to sow chaos by refusing to coordinate with local officials and by choosing instead to use migrants as pawns in his political games. I am proud of New York City's history of welcoming new immigrants. We can and we will continue to do so. In fact, I was pleased to see Mayor Adams announce just yesterday that he is reversing all anticipated budget cuts for the NYPD, the FDNY, and likely the library school and other social services programs as well, which he had originally said were needed due to the arrival of migrants in New York. Congress should help, however, by providing additional resources, by passing bipartisan legislation to, to help ease the transition for many migrants by ensuring that they could access work authorization more quickly and by taking up other bipartisan reforms to the immigration system. But time and time again, House Republicans have stood in the way of progress, of innovation, and of compromise. Instead, they insist they will only consider draconian policies that essentially destroy the asylum and refugee programs, policies that stand no chance of passage in the Senate, which shows that they are not interested in real solutions. Real solutions require compromise, and MAGA Republicans aren't interested in compromise. Real solutions rarely get you hits on Fox News or Newsmax, and they won't get you Donald Trump's endorsement. Enforcement alone cannot fix our immigration system. We know this because that approach has largely failed for three decades. 
People didn't stop coming when President Trump and Stephen Miller imposed the cruelest immigration policies imaginable. They didn't stop coming when Governor Abbott lined the Rio Grande with deadly boys covered in razor wire. They have not stopped coming even with record levels of removals and repatriations and funding for immigration enforcement. We need to expand legal pathways, mitigate push factors, tamp down on corruption, and implement smart border security measures. We have to come together to find solutions that actually work and break free from the partisan entrenchments that have kept us stuck in the past. We will need more border control agents, more asylum agents, and more immigration judges so that asylum cases can be adjudicated in weeks, not in years. And we need immigrants in this country. Forget the fact that the farm, that our, our, our vegetables would rot in the ground if, it weren't, if they weren't being picked by many immigrants, many illegal immigrants. The fact is that the birth rate in this country is way below replacement level, which means our population is going to start shrinking. And the ratio of people on Social Security and Medicare is going to increase relative to the number of people supporting them. This is a problem faced by every major country in the world. Few countries, however, have the means to uh, solve this problem through immigration. People want to immigrate to the United States. They do not want to immigrate to China or Russia. We are very lucky in that respect, and we should promote it and regulate it properly rather than denounce it ignorantly. Sadly, based on the track record of the 118th Congress so far, I don't think that will be happening anytime soon. I thank the witnesses for appearing before us today, and I yield back the balance of my time. Well, the gentleman has no time to yield back, and as content as I am in allowing uh, the Democrats to make our case for us, I, I do want to warn them we'll be enforcing the five-minute uh, limit on opening statements in the future. Um, without Point of objection. order, there are no limits on opening statements in this committee, Mr. Chairman. There's a five-minute limit in the House rules, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, all opening statements will be included in the record, and uh, I'll now introduce today's witnesses. Uh, we have with us today Chief Manuel Mello III, the Chief of the Fire Department of Shh! I'm a deep state secret operator. Oh, shite! Oh, shite! I'm a deep state secret operator. Deep in psych. Deep in psych. I'm a secret deep state operator. <gasps> oh no. <coughs> I'm a secret deep state operator. All my life. Oh shite. Oh shite. I've been trying to keep it secret, but the Trumpy Trumps have sold me out. Oh no! What a night! I'm in shite! <laughs> <laughs>